Recently, we had a request to hear some material about the two G's, gambling and gossip. Well, we discussed gambling not too many weeks ago, so we want to devote ourselves to that other G. Uh, I don't know, we could probably throw in some more G's like greed, uh, but nevertheless, we want to deal with the subject of gossip. The word usually used in the King James is talebearer. In fact, the word gossip does not appear, but this concept certainly does. And so there is tail-bearing, slander, backbiting, murmuring, whispering. All of these are a little bit related, but they all have a few different meanings as well. Uh, but in the scriptures, as we begin to go through them, we find that this is never used in a positive way and always used in a negative way and therefore condemned. The very first occasion where I could find that we uh, come up with uh, the concept is Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 16. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 16. In that verse we read, You shall not go about as a talebearer among your people, nor shall you take a stand against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. That second part may be more related than appears uh, to be when you first look at it. But not going about as a talebearer reminds us of 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 13 in the New Testament. And in that verse, we read, uh, And besides, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, not with the gospel, uh, but not only idle, but also gossips and busybodies saying things which they ought not. So some of the uh, women were guilty of this particular sin. Uh, but they were counseled under the law of Moses not to do that. And of course, neither should anyone behave in that, matter, uh, in that manner under the law of Christ. The word uh, fluo means to boil up, throw up bubbles of water, and since bubbles are hollow and useless things, to indulge in empty and foolish talk of persons uttering or doing silly things, garrulous babbling, tattlers. And uh, so these, uh, this is the definition from Strong uh, concerning the word translating, uh, translated as talebearer. Do not think, however, that what they bubble forth is always harmless. The verb form of uh, this word in the uh, Greek is also used once in the New Testament. And that would be uh, in 3 John 10. So it's used, the noun form is used in 1 Timothy 5, 13, but the verb form is used in 3 John 10, where it is applied to uh, Diotrephes that John says prates against us. So this is not something that is harmful or harmless. It is something that is harmful as described in that text. He prated against the apostle, which is almost unbelievable that anyone would speak against an inspired apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ but so lifted up with pride was Diotrephes that he did so. What some people bubble forth is mean and vicious. Gossip then involves foolishness, usually harmful words that one enjoys spreading around. Let's go to a few other passages as we find them in the scriptures. We find some in Psalms. Let's go to Psalm 15, verses 1 through 3. Psalm 15, beginning with the very uh, first verse. The writer says, 
and the writer is David, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? And who may dwell in your holy hill? And we're dealing with, basically, with fellowship here, are we not? Fellowship of man with God? And here's the answer to the question. He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. That's the positive side. The negative side is he who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. Those who engage in that kind of behavior are people who do evil to others and they cannot have the fellowship of God. So it's a very serious thing to be a gossip, to be a backbiter, a talebearer, a whisperer, a murmurer. Notice that the person described here not only has things to say against the enemies that he or she might possess, but also their friends. As one person said long ago, if someone tells you some bad things about another, what do you think the odds are that when they're talking to that other person, they say bad things about you? Let's go to another passage of scripture, Psalm 69. In uh, this messianic psalm, we want to take a look primarily at verse 12. Those who sit in the gate speak against me. I am the song of the drunkards. Imagine people of that caliber bad-mouthing the king David. They do not mind doing that. They do not mind ridiculing those who are more righteous, more honorable than they. They just don't uh, care if they do it or not. And you might think, well, is that possible? I mean, would they actually say something like that against somebody if there wasn't some merit to it? Well, remember how they treated the Lord and remember how Christians are advised that they will be treated in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 4. The apostle in that text tells us this concerning those who used to be in the world but have departed the world to obey the gospel of Christ. In regard to these things, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of excess speaking evil of you. And why are they speaking evil of you? Because you quit doing immoral things. You quit being involved in the same things you used to be involved with with them. And so now they speak evil of you. So yes, the righteous do not have to do anything in particular to merit criticism, to be gossiped about, to be slandered about. Let's go back now to look at some passages in Proverbs. And uh, we want to begin with uh, Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 13. Proverbs 11, verse 13. Solomon writes, <clears throat> A talebearer reveals secrets, but he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. Not everything that a talebearer says is untrue. Generally, it probably is, or at least an exaggeration, but in some cases he could just be revealing secrets that he has no business telling others about. Peter writes in 1 Peter 4.8, Love covers a multitude of sins. But the gossip does not care about a brother or sister or the damage that he or she might possibly do. Communicating corrupt things 
is what provides that individual with a, uh, a charge. Uh, this is what gets them excited, is to be able to actually do damage to other people. A faithful and loving person would conceal a matter rather than expose it and spread it and broadcast it. Well, let's go to another verse in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 8. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 8, The words of a talebearer are like tasty trifles, and they go down into the inmost body. Mmm, doesn't that look good? Doesn't that gossip sound good? That's what the gossip relies upon, that people will like hearing it. You know, uh, one person said, I never repeat gossip. So listen up really carefully right now. Only, only going to say it once. That's how uh, some people are, but they know that people thrive on hearing something a little unusual, a little out of the ordinary, a little uh, that makes someone else look bad. And then theoretically makes them look better because they're not as bad as that person. Also, Proverbs chapter 16, uh, verse 28. A perverse man sows strife, and a whisperer separates the best of friends. Again, this is an evil purpose to behave in such a manner. I printed a little bit of this uh, in the bulletin a few weeks ago, but it seems so appropriate, I wanted to repeat it now. In the play Othello, there's a conversation between Othello and Iago, who is serving as trying to stir up trouble between others. And, uh, oh, I left out this, Flatterer, Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 19. That's also uh, something to remember because uh, that's how some people get their information, is by flattering others. Uh, but here is the conversation. Iago says, ha, huh, I like not that. And Othello says, what dost thou say? Iago says, nothing, my lord, or if I know not what. Othello says, was not that Cassio parting from my wife? And Iago answers, Cassio, my lord? Oh, no, sure, I cannot think it that he would steal away so guilty-like seeing you coming. And Othello says, I do believe t'was he. The strife between Othello and Cassio, between Othello and Desdemona, has been kindled by some well-chosen words. With just a little uh, information, just a little bit of uh, innuendo to make things uh, look worse than they really are. In Proverbs chapter 26, verses 20 through 22, we read and was read for us earlier that the purpose of the gossip is exactly to do that to kindle strife. That's his goal. And that's what we need to understand. It may look like a conversation occurring in all innocence, but it actually turns out to be the one that we just described from Iago and Othello. But now let me give you another thing to think about in regards to gossip and reputation and somebody's good name. Consider these words also from uh, the play Othello. Good name in man and women, men and women. Dear my Lord is the immediate jewel of their souls. Who steals my purse steals trash. Tis something, nothing. Twas mine, tis his, and has been slaved to thousands. But he that filches from me my good name robs me of that which enriches not him, 
and makes me poor indeed. Iago said those words too. And he hit it exactly right. But that's exactly what he did, was to ruin the reputation of two good, righteous people. But he is correct in what he says about ruining the reputation of people. People who do that don't gain anything by it, but they can ruin other people. And, of course, that's the goal. The gossip will always have a supply of wood and a few matches. And so he's able to kindle strife. And he always has a ready audience, or nearly always has a ready audience, because somebody is always going to want to hear the tasty trifle that he's serving up. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever seen these cartoons before, but a few years back I saw quite a few of them, uh, I think written by Bob West, called Theophilus. And uh, if you can't read that, it says, uh, since you're new here, I'll tell you some things about uh, your uh, uh, people, your neighbors. And somebody might do that concerning congregations. Wouldn't that be sad if uh, somebody was visiting and somebody took them aside and said, oh, let me tell you some things about some of the members here. And so he goes on and on and on, describing this thing, that thing, and the other thing. And then finally, much later, I don't know what it is, but there's something about you I really like. Could it be the huge ear that's taking it all in? He has several other cartoons along these lines, if you care to look them up. But this one makes a good point about there being a ready audience for some of these types of things. Now let's go to the New Testament. There's not a lot in the New Testament. In fact, this is it. Uh, From Romans chapter 1, verses 19, uh, 29, and 30. And I want you to recall where this is found. This is found in a rather comprehensive list of sins. This is the one that uh, begins in verse 29, that they are filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers. And there we get to the part that we want. They are whisperers, backbiters. And notice... What's right next to that? Haters of God. Violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. These are not some innocent types of things that we're dealing with when we're dealing with gossip. These are as uh, heavy as any of these other sins that are described. The other passage is 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 20. Actually, this also is in a list of sins. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 20. For I fear lest when I come I shall not find you such as I wish, and that you may be found by you as you do not wish, lest there be contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath. Now remember, these are to Christians. Outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, Backbitings, whisperings, conceits, tumults. Once again, we have a couple of words related to gossip as uh, things that ought not to be mentioned among Christians. 
The gossip is set forth as an evil person seeking to destroy the lives and reputations of others. He is not interested in covering the sins of others, but rather in exploiting them. What's the solution? What do you do if somebody approaches you in the manner that they are wanting to impart gossip to you? Well, uh, Jeff told me about a former member here. I believe his name was Johnny Antwine. Uh, when somebody came up and said, do you know what brother or sister so-and-so said? He would take their arm and say, no, let's go and ask. You'd be amazed at how much that cuts down on gossip. Uh, yeah, they said something. Maybe I need to hear it. Let's go ask them what they said. And so forth. But how do you distinguish between gossip and necessary information? Well, here's my definition. It's gossip if it causes harm and is not helpful. It's gossip if it causes harm and is not helpful. For example, uh, maybe somebody pointed out to you and they said, you know, she used to have a drinking problem. Well, if she did and she's gotten over it, that's great. But leave it up to her to tell people. You know, sometimes Christians will in order to help somebody else say, you know, I used to have that problem. And it can be overcome and here's how I overcame it. But that's up for them to say, not up for somebody else to say. Or maybe a, a fellow is pointed out and somebody says, ah, you know, he used to have a pornography collection. Well, did he get rid of it? Has he repented? Then why are you bringing it up? Does anybody need to know that? Or is that just calculated to cause harm toward someone else? So we have to ask the question, is this helpful to know this information? Or is it harmful to know this information? In that case, it just besmirches someone's good name who has overcome sin in his life or her life. On the other hand, sometimes a warning is necessary not to cause harm to the individual but to warn others if you're not sure about that person's repentance. Decades ago, a preacher stole money from more than one place. And uh, uh, this is, uh, he was involved in different things. He was involved in a right to life group. Of course, he was involved in the congregation itself. But he was guilty of stealing money, and I'm not talking about change, I'm talking about thousands of dollars. So when uh, he left the place where he was, under the insistence of the elders, I believe, he went somewhere else, and some brethren tried to warn them about the situation. Uh, at least one or two members and a preacher contacted that place and said, uh, we're not trying to spread gossip, but this a person has a problem with stealing. And uh, apparently he had never repented, but they ignored the advice and hired him and he stole about $20,000 from them. Now that was a case not trying to damage someone's reputation but trying to warn them so that they were not taken in. And of course, they did not heed the warning, so it didn't do any good. But that would be the difference between trying just to make somebody look bad or warning them because they needed to know what the situation was. There's one thing that gossip certainly conflicts with, and that's Matthew 7:12. All things you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. Would you like somebody to smear you? 
Would you like someone to reveal secrets, even if true, without your permission? Would you like uh, to be damaged and have your reputation tarnished, perhaps? Then why would you do that to someone else? That's what Jesus basically is saying we ought to avoid. Do, Do what you is good to others. Do what you would like to have others do for you. And I don't think spreading things about your past, whether good or imagined, is something you would like done, and so we ought not to do it to others also. Satan wants people to either challenge or reject the truth, the light. If we engage in gossip, we're challenging the truth. We're not walking in the light. We are rejecting the light. So we need to be careful on those matters. Are you walking toward gossip or toward the light? If you are a child of God, hopefully you have uh, forsaken all of these uh, urges maybe to share confidential information with others. But if you are not a child of God, maybe you've never thought about that. Well, it's part of what you ought to repent of. We ought to repent of all things that we may be guilty of doing wrong. And that would include gossip just as much as it would fornication or stealing or being covetous or whatever it might be. We need to repent of this too. And if you are willing to do that, confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and be buried with him in baptism, all of these things can be washed away. There is nothing you have done that cannot be forgiven. You may not be able to undo some of the harm that you've caused. Sometimes the consequences of our sin linger on, though our sins are washed away in the blood of Jesus. But you can be forgiven before God of this or any other sin. If there's anyone this evening that needs to obey that gospel, or if you have questions about it, please let us know. If you're a child of God, you presumably have forsaken these things already. But if not, make it a point to do so and repent of any kind of behavior such as we have described tonight. If we can help you in any way, let us know while we stand and while we sing.